I'm Jim Cuno, President and Director of the Art Institute of Chicago, and I'm here this morning to talk with Richard Longworth, a, a senior fellow at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, whose recent book, Caught in the Middle, America's Heartland in the Age of Globalization, is a revealing uh, exposition of the possibilities and the difficulties of uh, one part of the country in this age of globalization. Richard, I wanted to begin with one thing. You raise an interesting uh, question from a painting that is so prominent in our collection at the Art Institute, and of course it's American Gothic, mm -hmm. a painting that uh, is of two individuals standing in front of a house, a house that was seen by the painter in Eldon, Iowa, yeah. and you reflect on the changes since 1930 when that painting was painted and represented the kind of hope of the heartland of the nation. Uh, things have changed since. What's the state of Eldon today? Well, I went to Eldon largely because uh, it was the scene for American Gothic. Um, the little house is still there. It's a little house with this interesting Gothic window, and it's actually been turned into a museum. Um, the rest of Eldon is in trouble. It's less than half of what it used to be. It's lost its railroads, lost its banks, lost most of its stores, just lost its only grocery store. There's still a consolidated school there. But Eldon, like so many of these small Midwestern farming towns, county seats, mining towns, railroad towns, um, are dying out. They existed for one era. They were needed during the industrial era and the growth of farms mm -hmm. to serve farming communities, mm -hmm. to be a place where people could shop or go to church or see their doctor or go to school. And this worked when the average farm was about 160, degree, 160 acres. We're in an era of big business, farming as mm -hmm. much as industry. Yeah. Now, big counts, and your average farm is about 10 times as big, which means there's ten times fewer shoppers, ten times fewer worshipers, mm -hmm. ten times fewer patients for the doctor, ten times fewer students mm -hmm. at the school. So these institutions and the towns themselves are dying out. Mm -hmm. And those people who have left Eldon, where have they gone? Come here, Chicago. Come to Chicago. Chicago it, this is a era of urbanization. Globalization is an urban phenomenon. Big cities, global cities like Chicago, we are almost unique in the Midwest in having made this transition from the industrial age to the global age and are thriving. So many other cities in the Midwest, Cleveland, Detroit, St. Louis, six out of the seven biggest cities in Ohio are all less mm -hmm. than half what they mm -hmm. once were and are really wondering what they are going to do for an encore. But it's the global cities like Chicago, New York, um, Seattle, Atlanta, Los Angeles, that are drawing mm -hmm. in the people from these small towns. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a structural and demographic change. Yeah, you quote from a, uh, an advisor to the mayor of Moscow who says on a, in a speech he gave here in Chicago <laughs> that uh, if a city develops successfully, you can't stop immigration. Can't. People go where the jobs are. Um, when my wife and I came back to Chicago 30 years ago, we were in the depths of the Rust Belt. This place was, it was gray and grim, sort of had a feeling slowly sliding into the lake. Look at it now, a lot of Chicago, not all of Chicago, but a lot of Chicago is booming. And it's not only the PhDs from India that have done it, but mm -hmm. all these workers from Mexico and other countries that have given the place new blood, new life, and you know, yes, new money, new ideas. Mm -hmm. um, a vibrant city has that. By contrast, Cleveland, which used to be more than 50% foreign born, is now about 4%, and somebody there told me, he says, we can't even mm. get illegal immigrants to come here. Mm. The reason is that there are no jobs, there's nothing to do. Um, Im immigrants, for all the problems and all the, the, you know, the political arguments about them, immigrants are both a result of economic vitality and a cause of it. Yeah. What's the secret of Chicago that has been able to uh, embrace these waves of immigrants over the course of 150 years and reinvent itself uh, so successfully over the course of that time when the rest of the Midwest uh, urban uh, centers have, have declined so much as you indicate so clearly in the book. Reinvention is absolutely the right word. Great cities do this. All big cities, you know, Paris, Damascus, Shanghai, mm -hmm. Singapore, all founded for an economic reason as a port or a mining city or a manufacturing city. There's got to be an economic reason. Mm -hmm. But that economic reason doesn't last forever. The mine gives out or the port silts up and your mm -hmm. successful cities reinvent themselves mm -hmm. and your great cities in history have reinvented and reinvented time time and again. Chicago is now in the process of reinventing itself. We've lost most of the heavy industry that gave us our identity, the city right, of the right. big shoulders. Right, right, right. We're kind of the city of the high foreheads now. <laughs> we, we've become a global city, a business center, yeah. <coughs> a place, one of the few cities in the world, we're usually ranked in the top ten 
of these global cities that literally run the world's economy. And one, one it last, cha changes our character. One last question, because we're running out of time. Okay. But you say that all of America has a stake in what happens in the Midwest. Give us a couple of minutes about that. Where, where things happen first, we were the first frontier when the pioneers first moved west. The Great Depression started here in the Midwest 10 years before it happened anywhere else. We recovered first. We were the arsenal of democracy during World War II. We were the first to recover the heavy industry after World War II, and then we were the first to go into the Rust Belt and the mm -hmm. decline. Um, globalization mm -hmm. is affecting everybody, but it's really affecting the Midwest probably more than any other area. And we like to think, you know, the future is written in California or somewhere. I don't think so as goes the Midwest, as goes the country. And this is a serious business because we are struggling with globalization now. And it's my thesis that a really healthy nation cannot house a diseased heart. Well, Richard, that's poignant and thank you so much. Uh, you'll read more in the book, Caught in the Middle, America's Heartland and the Age of Globalization by Richard Longworth. I urge you all to read it. Thanks so much. Jim, thank you.